Hi, I'm Gary Cassie. And I'm Drenda Cassie. Welcome to the program. As you probably know, I've owned a financial services company for more than three decades and helped countless hundreds and hundreds, thousands of people with their money over the years. So I love stories about other financial professionals. Well, John Kenneth Galbraith was one of the most famous and influential economists of the 20th century. He taught at Harvard and was an advisor to many government leaders. He recounted this story in his autobiography. Quote, it had been a weary day, and I asked Emily, my housekeeper, to hold all telephone calls while I had a nap. After a short while, the phone rang. President Lyndon Johnson was calling from the White House. Get Ken Galbraith on the line, he said. This is the president. Well, Emily replied, I'm sorry. He's sleeping, Mr. President, and he asked me not to, uh, to disturb him. Uh, president Johnson wasn't accustomed to not getting his way, and he tried again. Well, wake him up, he said. I want to talk to him. No, Mr. President, I can't do that, she said. I work for him, not you. <laughs> Later, after my nap, I returned the president's call, and he could scarcely control his pleasure. Tell that woman I want to hire her. I want her here, working for me in the White House. Well, our series this week is called Loyalty. I think you'd have to agree she was pretty loyal. And your pathway to promotion is loyalty. Emily, the housekeeper, understood loyalty, and it captured the attention of one of the most powerful men on the planet. And he offered her a job immediately at the White House. Loyalty is expected and rewarded. Wow, Gary, what amazing a great story. story. It is an amazing story. <laughs> yeah, it's a great story. <laughs> Sometimes we think we've got to bend and do what other people want, please other people, but really pleasing the one we have to give an account for. That is it. Is that is it. Who are you loyal to? She mm -hmm. knew who she worked for. And that is what held her. And today, we're going to be talking about eight steps. We're going to talk about different functions of being loyal that you need to understand to inherit the promotion that you desire. You know, at any step, a person headed towards this loyalty can be corrected, Drenda. Yeah, I mean, we've all had times where we missed it yeah. or we were not as loyal and we've had people be disloyal to us, but we have to learn this lesson because God That's can't right. promote us until we learn how to be loyal. Yes, and loyalty, disloyalty, two different words, two different results, and uh, you qualify by being loyal and you disqualify by being disloyal. Mm. And we want to talk about that today, and uh, let's kind of begin our discussion. If you want God's best, you want God's best, follow the path of loyalty. Yes. Mm. He's got to correct us, Gary, instruct us and direct us, because uh, the Lord, uh, the Bible says the Absolutely. Lord loves the one he disciplines. That's right. And so sometimes we think of correction as a negative thing. No. We, we think, think of it as, uh, well, you know, somebody corrected me and then we bristle, but really, mm -hmm. truly, if we believe in someone, yes. we want them to rise to their very best. And God believes in you. He believes in us. And so he wants to correct things that aren't right. We all grew up in this earth curse system. We have wrong perceptions of That's life. Right what is right, what is wrong. And so God in his love will show us, direct us, correct us, and he'll use uh, people around us, people that are over us in authority yeah. so that we can become the person that we're supposed to be. But unfortunately, too often, correction results in sometimes people being offended. And then what happens, Gary, when they get well, offended? Well, you get offended, you can become disqualified. Mm -hmm. Now, you can repent anywhere in the cycle, right? But right. we all have a choice. I think a, a loyalty is a decision that we make each day. And if we understand the reward of loyalty, we, we hold to loyalty, we promotion. Even if, even if your boss isn't so in tune with your uh, obedience, someone else is. God watches us. David was on the backside, you know, out there in the wilderness, the sheep. No one knew his name. In fact, his dad didn't even call him in when the prophet came and said, hey, the king is in your house bring your sons. His dad never even brought him in the house. Huh. So he was just, you know, the shepherd boy, right? right? But now God, see, he had passed tests. And it's interesting when King Saul was disqualified because he did not obey. He was not loyal. Hmm. God told the prophet, I have chosen someone else who is loyal because I know he will do what I tell him to do. Yet David had done nothing for him yet. David wasn't even in the service of the king yet. So how could David, how would God know that David will do everything I told him to do or tell him to do 
if he's not done anything yet. Because he'd been faithful with the little things. That's how exactly right. How he served right. his own father, how he served mm -hmm. the commission he'd been given, really set him up to be promoted to the That's king. Right. It tested his heart. And so a lot of times we think the little things are uh, not There's important. No such thing as a little thing. Now, David risked his life. It actually says he grabbed the hair of the bear, the lion. Gra and that's pretty, you know, he risked his life for some sheep. No, he risked his life for a trust that, that was given David. him. Yes. God knew if he passed that test, he could pass a bigger test.